Hello and welcome to this video on fuzzy joints. We'll be talking about the simple concept of fuzzy joints using R. We'll be using these packages, fuzzy join, string distance and GT. And let's prepare some sample data. So sample data was consist of two data sets or data frames. The first one will be some hospital admissions with the patient name, age and outcome. You can see that I've given four patient names. I want to keep the data files very small so that you can actually visually see what fuzzy joints look like. And the second file would be a vital starter. So blood pressure readings has been taken for the patients at various times. The patient name is there and their disposition, whether the patient died, alive, etc., is also there. So you can see that this is the first data file, admissions, patient name, age, and outcome. And if I look at the second file, which is called vitals, which looks like this. And notice that in the first name, the John, I've actually capitalized um, on purpose. So let's see how we go about doing a fuzzy join. So before we do a fuzzy join, let's do a simple inner join. So inner join on names. And to do the inner join, I'll be using the dplyr package, which I haven't yet called. So we would have to go back to the top and call the library dplyr. We have detailed videos on how to do different joins in dplyr also. So this is more for data manipulation. Okay, with everything in place, let's do a simple inner join based on the patient name. And you would see that when we do the join, this is a simple inner join. There's no fuzzy join involved. So you would see there's only one record because the patient name Bill exists in both the tables, the admissions as well as the vitals. So you can see admissions also has the name Bill and vitals also has that. So in the simple inner join, we only have one record, which is Bill, because this is a perfect match on the name. So now comes the concept of the fuzzy join. The fuzzy join would be where we don't know exactly the name of the patient, but there could be some misspellings here and there. So let's see how we can handle that. So for example, we have Ramesh, R R Ramesh, Rakesh, etc. So we can see that the fuzzy join has actually joined the starter. So even the names are not exactly the same. It has given us the distance. In some cases, there's a one character mismatch. In some cases, there are two characters mismatch. So you can see that in Ramesh, there's only a difference of one character. In some cases, there'll be a difference of two characters. You can see from the, from the patient name and then the name field, which is also this one. So you can see the two characters which are different so, but fuzzy join is still able to match those. So it's very useful when you have data coming from two different sources where there's misspellings in the text value or the names are not exactly recorded properly. It, of course, it can be used for different other fields also, for example, dates and even for maps, which we will cover in the future videos. This video is only talking about the text-based matching. And see, there is a difference in the first and the second command. And the difference is that in the second one, I said ignore case equals true. So remember there was a, a person called John in one of the data fields, I called it as capital. So you can see that even that can be matched. But in the first instance, when I said ignore case equals false, it didn't. But when I say ignore case equals true, the system is able to match that as well. Fuzzy join has a lot more to offer. We can do fuzzy joins on dates also. We can also do fuzzy joins on geonalytics data, for example, try to find out the distance from one location to another, or f try to find out distances which are like 100 kilometers or 100 miles away from a particular position, etc., can also be done by fuzzy joints. So let's talk about that in the future video. Thank you very much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.